Hi folks, welcome back to the tutorial of AGS. In the last video I showed you a small cutscene that I created for uh, for AGS, the AGS tutorial and um, it just kind of demonstrated a couple of things that you can do with, with cutscenes and in this uh, video we'll start with uh, breaking that cutscene down and, and to start creating that cutscene. Well the first thing that we want to do when, with, a, with this cutscene is um, basically create a new room and that room will be specific for that cutscene. Um, the room that, that we're going to create is just going to be the default black background room. We're not going to add a background to it because we don't really want a background for this room. So um, scroll on down to where it says rooms. Um, right now we have the main hall and the party hall. I'm going to create a new room by right clicking on rooms saying new room. I'll use a blank room as the template. Go ahead and click OK. And it creates a new room for me. Now I'm going to go in and um, change the go click on edit room and change the description of the room to we'll call it um, cutscene room just as, as an example you might call this inter introduction room or intro room or something like that depending on if this might be a, a cutscene for your introduction to your game or something like that uh, but in this case I'll just call it cutscene room and everything else we can leave uh, the way it is the um, the background like I say is black is black and that's really the background that we want um, so now the next thing that I want to do is actually start Sammy in this room um, right now he starts in the uh, party hall I'm sorry in the main hall but we want to start him in the the cutscene room so if I go up to uh, my characters and I go to Sammy double click on Sammy and then one of Sammy's properties in the lower right corner here is um, starting room property starting room is set to one which is again the uh, main hall I'm going to change this to three which is the new room that we created is the, uh, the intro room so that should be all that we need to do to set up the the introduction room or the cutscene room um, for now um, so now what I wanted to do is kind of go over what are called text overlays within AGS um, basically a text overlay all that is is that's just a way to display text to the screen now we've seen text on the screen before um, when a character talks, for example, we see text that appears above the character's head. Well, all that text is is that's really a text overlay. It's just that the say function for a character automatically just creates that text overlay for you, and it automatically displays that above the character's head when you call that that say function on a character. Um, so really, that's what we want to do. But we don't want to associate the text overlay in this case. We don't want to associate it with a character talking. We just want to display text to the screen. Um, and the way that we do that is we want to create uh, an event for this room so we want when the uh, we want our our standard event to happen when the when the uh, room uh, fades in after the room fades in we want this text overlay to appear so um, just find the event uh, enters room after fade in I'm going to click on the uh, ellipses button and I get our our function that we've seen before now I'm going to create our text overlay now a text overlay is just uh, the way that you create that is you say overlay and that's a capital O overlay and now you need a star and that that refers to a pointer within AGS I'm not going to get into pointers right now just know right now that you need a star for overlays uh, to work so you say overlay space star or asterisk and then you need the um, the variable name in this case we'll call it text overlay and this is just a name that you can make up um, it's whatever you want your variable to be called but we'll call it text overlay so I've just defined a variable called text overlay now I need to assign it to something. So what I do is I, the way I would do that is I would say text overlay, which is the name of our variable, and I say equals, and now I can say overlay again capital O overlay dot. Now it gives me two options. We can either create a, a graphical overlay or a textual overlay. A graphical overlay is just um, basically if you wanted to display a picture on the screen uh, that's not necessarily associated with an object or anything like that. You just wanted to kind of display, display a, a graphical overlay on the screen. You could do it with great graphical. In this case we wanted to cr create a textual overlay because just text is what we want. So we said create textual, open parentheses. The first two parameters it wants are the X and Y location. Where do we want the text overlay to be um, located? Well in this case I don't really know so I'll just guess and I'll say 160 comma 160 and we'll see what that does and I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. Now it wants the width of our text overlay. Well again I'm not really sure what the width is so let's just guess and let's say 100. This is the number, that's actually the number of pixels across the screen that we want our, our text to be but I, I'm not sure at this point so let's just guess and say 100. 
Now it asks what font do we want to use. Now by default there are three fonts within uh, within a default game. E font font 0, E font font 1, E font font 2 and these are just kind of built in when you create the default game. Um, what you can also do is you can also use two um, uh, built-in fonts for that uh, come with AGS as well and those are called game dot normal font. The normal font is the font that, that AGS uses to display uh, the text that's inside of a, a button for example when it asks uh, when you say quit game and it says are you sure you want to quit and it has quit or, or cancel that's that text right there is rendered using the normal font so uh, that's one font that you can use or you can use speech font uh, speech font is the font that um, that is by default is displayed over the character's head when they when the character is talking. Um, so in this case, we'll just say normal font game dot normal font is the font that we want to use to display this text. And now it asks for a color. Um, I'll get into colors a little later, but for now we'll just we'll just pick a color. I'll just say uh, seven. And then the text that we want to display here. Now the text that we want to display, let's just say, is um, this is the first text overlay. And then I'm going to add one more line here. Um, I'm going to say weight, and I'll just put in a, like a 300 here. Um, all weight does is it just it does just that. It just waits and it halts right here for for um, a certain number of game loops. This is a good way to sort of time things within your uh, cutscene. Uh, in this case, I'll just set it to 400. If I set it to 400, this waits uh, 10 seconds because we talked earlier how 40 game loops per second. 40 game loops equals a second, so if I want to wait for 10 seconds, that's 40 times 10 is 400, 400 game loops. So this will just wait for 10 seconds uh, before the function ends. And I'll show you why that's important in just a second. If I go ahead and run the game now, okay, we see Sammy, and then we see this text overlay. This is the text overlay that we created. It just says this is the first text overlay. Now notice a couple of things. Notice the, the line wraps and then notice it just disappeared. And the reason that it just disappeared is because our 10 seconds was up. Um, I'm going to talk about that first. So what happened is our 10 seconds was up, it waited for 10 seconds and it stopped right here. Now once the 10 seconds was up, it went to this next line here and then it finished the function. Now after, it, after the function finished, our text overlay disappeared. And the reason for that is because this text overlay we created inside this function. So this text overlay only exists within this function. Once the function exits, then our text overlay goes away because our text overlay basically doesn't exist anymore. If we want that text overlay to continue to exist outside of the function, well then we need to create the text overlay outside the function. We need to declare it outside the function. So in other words, I need to take this and just do a cut and a paste. And if I paste it up here outside of the function, its scope is it's called its scope that scope of that variable now is exists globally within the room so that it's not it's not contained within this function anymore so this this text overlay will continue to exist even outside of this function so now I can even take this weight out because this weight isn't necessary at this point and if I run it now now the text overlay stays there and it will stay there forever as long as this room stays there because uh, because again this text overlay function now exists outside of the scope of that function it's a little confusing, um, but just think about it like this. If I create the, the text overlay, if I declare the text overlay within the function, then that, uh, that text overlay only exists within that function, and then after that function exits, that text overlay will then cease to exist and will be, dis will be uh, removed from the screen. But if I create the text overlay with outside of any function, here and just in the regular room script, then that means that that text overlay will exist even after that function is, is, uh, has gone away. So um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is when I run the game, you see that, okay, the, the text overlay is displayed, but it's wrapped. It's wrapped from one line to another, and that's because of the width of the uh, text overlay. I set the width, remember, to 100 uh, when, I, when it asked me for the width uh, of the text overlay. Now that wasn't really the right variable, the right uh, width, apparently, because it, it was too small. Um, 100 pixels was actually too small to display all of the text, so that text wrapped to the next line. So I can play with this um, 
this variable here, this was, this was the width parameter. I could play with that if I wanted to um, and bump that up until, until we got a size that we liked. For example, if I said 200 instead of 100 and then ran it. Aha, uh -huh, now it doesn't wrap anymore because now we've given it enough width to accommodate the length of the string. So this is the first text overlay now appears uh, as an entire, uh, as one line, which is really more like what we want. Um, this is going to actually span a couple of videos. I'm running out of time on this video, but I'm going to get into the next video. I'm going to get into this isn't really centered on the screen, so we really want to be able to center the text overlay onto the screen and put it put it in a more centered location into the screen, so it's sort of in the middle of the screen. So that's what we'll get into in the next video. See you then, guys.